In this glass are two liquids with very different properties. And you can see that these two liquids, they don't want to mix with each other. The top layer is oil and the bottom layer is water. Oil and water will never mix no matter how hard I try to mix them together. Oil and water are both made up of tiny molecules. Molecules are chemical compounds that result when atoms covalently bond with one another. The shape of the molecule, also known as the molecular geometry, plays a really important role in the function of the molecule. These molecules don't mix because their shapes are so different from one another. This lesson is all about molecules. So what are we gonna learn in this lesson? First, we'll learn the different types of shapes that molecules could have. Then we'll learn about molecular polarity. Finally, we'll learn about intermolecular forces. We've seen structural formulas, and structural formulas are molecules in two dimensions, like this one, methane, CH4. It looks like this. When we talk about molecular geometry though, we have to think in three dimensions because, well, molecules are in 3D. The shape of a molecule is explained by a theory called Vesper theory. It stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. The theory says that regions of electrons around a central atom are gonna to wanna to get as far away from each other as possible because electron regions are negatively charged and like charges repel. So if I have four electron regions in two dimensions, the molecule is going to look like this because that's as far as these regions can get from one another. Now an electron region is either a covalent bond, it could be a single, double, or triple bond. Those I'll just count as one region. Or it'll be a lone pair of electrons. So NH3 and CH4 both have the same number of electron regions. They have four regions. In CH4, all four of those regions are bonds whereas NH3, three regions are bonds and one region is a lone pair. When we consider the shape of a molecule, we consider two different geometries. First, we consider the electron region geometry, how the electron regions are arranged around a central atom. We also consider the molecular geometry. This is how the bonds are arranged around the central atom. The molecular geometry is different from the electron region geometry because with the molecular geometry region, the lone pairs are invisible we can only see atoms, and so we only see bonds. NH3 and CH4 both have the same electron domain geometry, but they have different molecular geometries. The shape of the two molecules, in other words, are different. We're gonna look at some of the most common electron and molecular geometries. We will describe them by name and the angles between the bonds. Each shape will have a central atom with a certain number of electron regions surrounding that central atom. We're gonna look at molecules with two, three, four, five, and six electron regions around a central atom. For each electron region, we're gonna consider different molecular shapes when the electron regions are lone pairs instead of bonds. So let's just look at the different possible electron region geometries. If we have two electron regions around a central atom, they'll be spaced out in a line. This electron geometry is called linear and the angle is 180 degrees. Now, three electron regions will be spaced across the central atom like this. The electron geometry is called trigonal planar. Trigonal is the geometrical name for this sort of triangle shape, and then planar is referring to the fact that it's flat. The angle is 120 degrees. Four electron regions will space across the central atom like this. It's kind of like cutting a sphere into four portions. The electron geometry is called tetrahedral, and the angle is 109.5 degrees. Five electron regions will space across the central atom like this. Notice the trigonal shape when I look at it at this angle. And then when I look at it this other way, I could see this pyramidal shape on top and on the bottom. So two pyramidal shapes and then this trigonal shape. So we call it trigonal bipyramidal. There are two angles here. When I look at it this way, I can see an angle of 120 degrees. But when I look at it this way, I can see an angle of 90 degrees. So we have two possible angles, 120 or 90, in this type of geometry. And then with six electron regions, they're going to space across the central atom like this. No matter how I look at this one, the angle is always 90 degrees. This shape is called octahedral. It splits a sphere into eight portions, and the angle is 90 degrees. Now we can have six electron regions, but they don't all have to be bonds. Some of those regions could be lone pairs. Remember that we only see bonds and we won't see the lone pair. So the molecule is gonna look really different if we replace a bond with a lone pair. 
take a look at these two, for example, the same number of electron regions, but the molecules look really different. So let's look at the different shape possibilities we have with six electron regions. Each molecule will have the same electron geometry. It'll always be octahedral because the electron regions will space themselves out the same whether they're bonds or lone pairs. So five bonds and one lone pair will look like this. It's called square pyramidal. Remember that the electron geometry is still octahedral, but the molecular geometry is now square pyramidal. With four bonds and two lone pairs, it's gonna look like this. This is called square planar. With three bonds and three lone pairs, it's going to look like this. This is called T-shaped. With two bonds and four lone pairs, it's gonna look like this. This is called linear. All of these molecular geometries have the same electron geometry of octahedral, but since we can't see the lone pairs, each one has its own unique molecular geometry. Now let's look at different molecules with five electron regions. When we have five bonds and no lone pairs, it will be trigonal bipyramidal. With four bonds and one lone pair, it's gonna look like this. It's called seesaw. With three bonds and two lone pairs, it'll look like this. Once again, we have T-shape. Two bonds and three lone pairs will look like this. This is linear once again. Each of these molecular geometries, again, has the same electron geometry because they have five different electron regions. Now let's look at different molecules that will have four electron regions. Four bonds and no lone pairs is called tetrahedral. Three bonds and one lone pair will be called trigonal pyramidal. Two bonds and two lone pairs will be bent. Each of these has the same number of electron regions, but once again, different molecular geometries. Finally, let's look at different molecules that have three electron regions. Three bonds and no lone pairs will be trigonal planar. Two bonds and one lone pair will be bent once again. Each of these has the same number of electron domains, but different molecular geometries. Now, when there's two electron regions, we really only have one measurable shape. It's linear. Sometimes the electrons with a bond are not being shared evenly. A covalent bond is sort of like a tug of war, and sometimes one of the elements is a bit stronger than the other element. This strength is measured as an element's electronegativity. We can determine if elements are sharing electrons evenly by comparing their electronegativities. We will calculate the difference. We call that delta E. I've attached a chart of electronegativities as an attachment to this lesson so that you can look up the values of the elements electronegativities. What we do to calculate the difference is take the larger number and subtract the smaller number. If your answer is between 0 and 0 0.4, the electrons are shared evenly. This is called a nonpolar bond. If your answer is between 0.5 and 1.9, the electrons are not shared evenly. The element with the greater electronegativity is attracting the electrons in the bond closer to itself. Since the electrons are pulled closer to that element and electrons are negatively charged, the element will have a slightly negative charge. We show that with the symbol delta negative. The other element will have a slightly positive charge, and we show that with the symbol delta positive. This is called a polar bond because there are two poles in this bond. Now a molecule could have polar bonds, but be nonpolar overall. To be polar, the molecule must have an overall dipole. A dipole means separation of charge. That is, one side of the molecule will have a slightly negative charge, and then the other side will be slightly positive. Here's an example of a polar molecule, CH3F. Carbon and hydrogen will form nonpolar bonds, but carbon and fluorine will form polar bonds. The delta E between carbon and hydrogen would be 0.4 and the delta E between carbon and fluorine would be 1.5, which makes a polar bond. So since we have a dipole in this molecule, in other words, separation of charge, this molecule is a polar molecule. Here's an example of a nonpolar molecule. Now all the bonds are polar because it's carbon bonded to fluorine. Here are all the delta negatives around the fluorines, and the delta positive is here in the middle. Now overall, there's no dipole, there's no separation of charge. If I look at one extreme of the molecule, one side of the molecule, I see a negative charge. And then if I go all the way to the other side of the molecule, I see another negative charge. 
it's not a dipole because it's the same polarity on both sides of the molecule. It's nonpolar overall. A quick test to determining if a molecule is polar or nonpolar is to check if the molecule is symmetrical. In general, symmetrical molecules are nonpolar. Molecules that have similar polarity like to stick together, so nonpolar molecules like to stick with other nonpolar molecules, and polar molecules like to stick with other polar molecules. This is the reason that oil and water do not mix with each other. Oil is nonpolar and water is polar. Intermolecular forces are the forces that keep the oil molecules stuck to each other and the water molecules stuck to each other. There are three major types of intermolecular forces. London dispersion forces are the weakest of all the intermolecular forces. They exist between all molecules, but they are only really evident between nonpolar molecules. Dispersion forces form when the positively charged nucleus of an atom of one molecule attracts the negatively charged electrons of an atom in another molecule. This is a very weak attraction. However, the larger the atom or molecule, the larger the attraction will be. Methane, ethane, propane, and butane are all gases because their molecules don't stick together very well. The forces of attraction are very, very weak, and they're very small molecules. Octane, on the other hand, is a liquid at room temperature. It's a much bigger molecule, and so the dispersion forces are much stronger. The second intermolecular force is called a dipole force. Dipole forces are stronger than London dispersion forces. The dipole of a polar molecule will attract the dipole of another polar molecule, unlike charges attract. This carbon to fluorine bond, the partially positive carbon will stick with a partially positive negative fluorine on another molecule. This is a much stronger force than dispersion forces, so compounds that exhibit dipole forces tend to be liquids. The third intermolecular force is called hydrogen bonding. This is a special kind of dipole force. It's like a super strong dipole force. Hydrogen bonding occurs between molecules that contain hydrogen bonded to oxygen, hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, or hydrogen bonded to fluorine. Since hydrogen is so incredibly small, when it bonds to an extremely electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, a supercharged dipole is formed. Hydrogen has a really big slightly positive and the oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine will have a really big slightly negative. Hydrogen bonding is much stronger than a regular dipole interaction, and so tiny molecules like water that can hydrogen bond will be liquids at room temperature, even though much larger molecules that can only dipole bond might be gases at room temperature. So did you learn everything in this lesson? Well, if you did, you learned that molecules take on an ordered three-dimensional shape according to Vesper theory. Covalent bonds can be polar or nonpolar. Molecules that are not symmetrical and have polar bonds are generally polar molecules. Molecules stick together according to their polarity. Nonpolar molecules stick with other nonpolar molecules, and polar molecules stick with other polar molecules. Intermolecular forces hold molecules together. London dispersion forces are the weakest, dipole forces are stronger, and then hydrogen bonding are the strongest intermolecular force.